appreciate you watching. Uh, so I took another exam. Uh, the, this damn stay at home order quarantine has me a little bored and, and wanting to, uh, to learn as much as I can, I guess, and, and get as many professional certifications and, and licenses as, as I can and, and check off some of those boxes. So I've always thought about uh, selling real estate. I remember the, the first time I, I, I spoke to a college counselor, or actually I think it was in a group setting, and they asked what, um, what we wanted to do, what, what was our purpose for, for pursuing a bachelor's degree. And it for me was, I went to work in IT at a Fortune 500 company, and I wanted to uh, to sell real estate. I didn't really know what that meant at the time, but I just thought like people on TV sell real estate, and it looks like they make a lot of money, so I'll take some of that. I ran out of books to listen to, I ran out of podcasts to listen to. I uh, I was walking down the street and I saw a real estate sign. I thought, oh, I can get a real estate license, maybe. Let me look at let me look into that, and that's literally how um, why I. I uh, where I got the, the idea from and this was maybe um, maybe about a month ago or so so I googled <laughs> how to get a real estate license and where I can take classes I wasn't sure how, how difficult it would be I had never really looked at the material at all so I googled where I can take classes because I assumed that I would need to like maybe take some online classes maybe they offered it at a community college I just wasn't sure uh, what what I could do. So when I googled it, I saw of course a bunch of like advertisements and, and schools and things come up. So I started looking into them, and a lot of them said online. So my assumption was that it would be like online classes and, and things like that. So I started looking at the price, and it was like four or five hundred dollars. And I thought, I, I don't really want to pay that for a class. Like, where can I get this material for free? Um, that's not really possible. So I did some more searching and I found like the the cheapest solution I could find which was I want to say it was two hundred dollars I'm pretty sure it was one ninety nine um, it, it may have been two ninety nine but I think it was one ninety nine and I thought let me make sure this is real because everything else was like three four hundred dollars so let me make sure this is real so I, I did some reviews and it, it was called Chicago real estate school I believe uh, either way I'll put the link in the the description and um, it, it, it seemed legit, so I thought, cool, let me go ahead and buy this. If it's not legit, then, you know, me and the credit card company, will, we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, so I, uh, I logged in, got the material, and thought, like, all right, when do the classes start? And what I found was that it was, it was fully online. They essentially, you, when you pay, you are unlocking uh, access to their, their library of their uh, real estate broker uh, material and it includes 23 chapters of, of a lot of reading and some audio so I thought okay let me just listen to the audio and I'll be fine um, I'll read through it if I have to but then I read a couple of um, actually I went to YouTube and I I uh, watched a video just to answer a couple of questions to see like how difficult could it possibly be and I saw like there's a lot of things that are straightforward but there's a lot of technical things that are are, are not you know if you don't study or read the material it's not something that's just going to come natural to you so i thought okay let me um let me read through the like the first chapter of this this stuff and see how difficult it is and i read through the first chapter and i was pleasantly surprised that all right this is a little bit easier than i than i expected right like especially if you if you've had uh, the chance to buy or or sell a house like you hear a lot of those terms if you've ever had the chance to sit down with a real estate broker like you've heard a lot of these terms and you kind of understand what they mean but from the other side of like being at the being the broker, it's a, it's a little different, but it, it's more or less the same. So I thought, okay, this would be fine. Let me listen to the audio. So I listened to a couple of the audio uh, clips up to like chapter three, and I realized like, wait, 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 there's a lot of technical terms. Like, if I'm going to take this shit seriously, and plus I just pay for it, let me go ahead and read this damn material. So <clears throat> um, I said I'll give myself about a week, two weeks, and I'll just read through it every day, a couple chapters uh, when I get time. And so over to over about two weeks or so, I just read it uh, on the phone mostly. Uh, just turn on the uh, you know if you have an iPhone, you can just click that that button and turn it into like a reader mode, and that shit like it makes it so much better and easier, clearer to read. So I read through it, got through the 23 chapters, uh, listened to all the audio, and the audio was more or less like kind of helping you to it was like an overview of the of the chapter but it was not given a lot of details like you literally had to read the, the information or you wouldn't you wouldn't get all of the technical terms and um some of the the like you know the the, the details and the the nuances that 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 you, you would hope that an instructor would would give you but uh was not there 
Uh, so that that was something I was really kind of disappointed in. It was more like just someone just kind of reading like, yeah, if you go through chapter three, you'll see that it has this, this, and this. Um, you want to make sure you read that thoroughly. I'm not going to go over it. It's, it's detailed pretty clearly there. And it's like, all right, that's cool, but I paid for someone to kind of teach me this. However, uh, that's not what it was. So I, I read through it, listened to all the audio, got to the end, and you have to take a final exam. Once you get to the end, they send you a link for the, I'm sorry, take a step back. Um, no, actually, I think you do take the final exam first. Yeah, you take the final exam first and it's based on all the material you just read. And, and throughout each chapter, there's also a quiz um, in an exercise that that has a bunch of questions related to that chapter. So at the end you take a final and it's, and it's based on all that stuff. You have to score 70% or better. And then from there they let you unlock the second set of classes. And that second set of classes was like a, a live webinar that's it's pre-recorded that you don't have to have a computer or your camera on. I, again, I did this from the phone, um, scheduled it, uh, just put the headphones on. And as I, I walked the dog and just sat around, I, I listened to it. But this was much better where it went into details of, of case studies and, and how to really uh like the things you can and cannot do as a as a real estate broker and the the types of licenses and how long you need to be licensed to be a managing broker and just a lot of the technical stuff that i was hoping for in that through the the curriculum was actually there in those those webinars so those were actually really good i i did actually listen to those a few days before leading up to to taking the, to the real exam so I, I thought those were pretty good all right so uh, got through the material and then I went to go and schedule it. So after you um, do the webinar, actually, so the one thing I didn't do the first time is I didn't fill out the uh, the paperwork. So they, they want you to print out uh, the case studies and as you go through them through the live webinar, they want you to fill out the paperwork and, and kind of like, you know, play along in the class. Obviously no one was watching me, so I wasn't doing that shit. I just, you know, listened to it. I, I got it, I understood. I'm like, okay, cool, this is perfect. So then I emailed them, told them I was done. They said, yeah, uh, send us in a copy of all the, 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 the case study material. So I went through that really quick, just wrote down all the things that, because I remembered like the case studies from, from listening to the, the audio webinars. They actually went through it line by line. So I remember what, it was, what was discussed. So when I saw the questions, it, it, was, you know, it wasn't too bad. So I just wrote the answers uh, that, I, um, that I had come up with. Um, so then I took pictures, sent it over to them, and then from there they upload your information into the um, whatever the state website is to uh, let them know that you took the proper classes, you passed the final exam, you did this, blah, 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 blah. Now you can sit for the actual exam. So that was done. Uh, they put my information in. It's an old system, and they really need to update that shit. I wasn't able to really schedule it online. Um, it's really a joke, but however, I called the number. It was still even difficult to schedule it when calling the number. But it's not like a, like a, a typical exam, and it's not given like every every day, right? Like there was like one date, like to the the next day, and I didn't feel like I was really ready because I didn't really go over the material really uh, again. So I uh, I had to schedule it for like two or three weeks out, and I was really kind of upset because I like to like get it all and just like brain dump, right? Like go in there, like I just fresh in my mind. I want to go in there and take the test. I don't want to wait three weeks later and now have to go and refresh. But what can you do, right? So I scheduled it and I um, decided I'm not even going to look at that shit or think about it until about two or three days before the exam, which is actually uh, around my birthday. So um, I was pretty busy that weekend. I really didn't pick up the material again until really the day before the exam. And again, I listened to the webinars again. Um, I went over some of the technical details in the in the material that I I felt like um, that that I would need to know that I would forget if I didn't study it right before like principal meridians and how many um, education hours and and what dates and of what year do you need to recertify and things like that like I remember it was every other year in like April or September but I wanted to be sure right because those are you know, those are free answers, so I want to make sure I got those. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, so I thought even up to the day before my exam was scheduled at 9 that I will, um, I'll listen to, uh, to, uh, to the webinars and blah, blah, blah. But I actually thought my exam was scheduled at 9.30. I walked out of the door at like 8.55, realizing that it was at 9. Got there like 15 minutes late. They still let me take it, so um, 
that that uh, that was good, but I didn't get that last like 20 minutes of study. I had like four things that I took screenshots of that I want to study, and I, I didn't get to look at it. But um, I don't think I got questions on one exam, so it doesn't fucking matter. All right, so the exam itself, I would say if you are going to, if you plan on sitting for the real estate broker exam, I would absolutely be very um, familiar with the discrimination laws. There's a lot of questions on that. Um, I had a lot of questions on on calculating how much money you should bring to closing or how much your commission is or how much the uh, tax stamps will be, things like that. So really understand how to, to calculate percentage. Uh, it wasn't anything major, right? Like I suck at math, like I, I'm the worst. Uh, but calculating percentage when you just got to multiply it to get the, not a big deal, right? Like just if you struggle with that, Google it. I promise you it, it is not a big deal, but you do want to be sharp in that because those are, to me, those are free answers because it's a, it's a, you know, it's the right answer, right? Like if it's a $200,000 uh, house and the commission is 5% and you need to have um, the, 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 the lender wants you to, to pay down 3% points and you know that well, and they also uh, want you to bring 20% to the down payment. So it'll ask you calculate that, right? Well, your, 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 uh, your, your points that they want you to pay down are going to be based on the finance price. So you want to make sure that you take the commission out of the total sale price and blah, 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 blah. Be sharp on that because that there's a lot of questions on that stuff. Um, taxes, just understand that Illinois pays taxes in arrear. So understanding like, the, the questions that I had were on the line of the closing document, who gets the credit, who gets the debit of the, uh, when, uh, when it comes to uh, the, the tax line. So understand what a credit and the debit are. Uh, obviously, if it's a credit, it's for you. If it's a debit, they're taking it away from you. Escrow accounts, uh, under, there was a lot of questions just related to mortgages in general. So if you've ever had a mortgage, you'll be fine, right? But understanding that if you put down less than 20%, Insurance over 20%, no insurance, they're gonna hold money for escrow, blah blah blah. Um, earnest money, what you, should you do in situations where, where um, you know, finances may not be as as perfect as you expect? Um, so the, the question I have was, should you bring more earnest or or I don't remember the, the specific question, but the answer was bring a, a higher uh, earnest deposit. So just to understand what earnest is and what it's used for what you can and can't do as a broker as far as listing property. So if you're a personal assistant or if you're an unlicensed broker, really understand, or I guess you're not a broker, but if you're an unlicensed uh, professional, you wanna make sure you understand what you can and can't do, what the limitations are for open houses, listings, what you can say on the phone, things like that. Uh, agency, so it, it's real, I had a few questions on agency and, and it's about when to disclose who you are, whom you're working for. If you are selling your own property, you have to make sure you let them know that you're an agent. Um, if you're going to be a dual agent, right? Illinois allows that where you can represent the buyer and seller. So just understanding that when to disclose those things, which is always like whatever the fucking answer is, like you want to disclose that as soon as possible, right? You don't want to hold any secrets. Uh, understanding your fiduciary responsibilities, making sure that you are always honest and obedient and all that shit. Um, trade fixtures, I had a couple of questions on what you can and cannot take with you uh, during lease property once the lease is over. There were a lot of questions on, uh, not a lot, but there were a handful of questions on property management, on leasing, uh, what you can and cannot accept as a, as a licensed property manager as far as rental payments and signing leases and how you act on the behalf of the owner, things like that. Um, <laughs> how you describe property. So I did have a question about meets and bounds. So just understanding that that shit is stupid and confusing and you can understand it when you see it. Not necessarily understand it, but you you have a, a solid understanding that meets and bounds essentially means that it's gonna have, wherever it ends, it's gonna start where it ends, right? And just read the material on that. Um, don't feel like you have to be an expert. Don't feel like you can you need to be able to write uh, a survey because you you're, you don't, this is not a survey exam, right? So don't worry about that, but just understand how a meets and bounds uh, survey may look. Indeed, um, understanding who owns a deed, what the, 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 what warranties come with a deed, what deeds have the most warranties, what deed have the least amount of warranties, the, um, 
who has title to the property, uh, how you can uh, sue to, to separate title if you're in a joint tenancy or uh, if you're in a, a tenancy and severality, which means like you're married and you can't do it. Just understand that what you can and cannot do in like those four or five things like tenancy in common, uh, joint tenants, tenants and severality. Again, like um, it's, it's a lot of stuff, but it's, it's not incredibly difficult. I assure you, I, I went through this material in about two weeks or so. And um, it, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's probably more, no, I, I would say the, the PMP is definitely a little bit more in depth because there's so many different disciplines for the PMP that you really have to be sharp on. This is more or less um, understanding what you can and cannot do, what the laws are, uh, who has the, the, the rights to property, wills and leases and things like that. And yeah, like it's, it's just, it's, it's a lot of information, but it's, it's, it's easy to consume, right? If you really just take some time and, and just focus on that again, like this is not something that I had an instructor on. I typically like a, a video instructor to kind of tell me, show me on a whiteboard, like what I should be focusing on. Give me those bullet points to say this, 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 and this, this wasn't that, but I still found that it, it was, um, it was, it was relatively easy to to consume the material and be able to um, to understand enough to, to to give the exam. So, I'd say go do it if you you've been thinking about it. Again, uh, the the exam costs fifty five dollars, so it's one of those things where if you don't pass, like who the fuck cares, right? It costs fifty dollars. I know like that that's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money. It's not a, a huge investment. The the class does cost a, a little bit, but I, I think um, if if you're willing to make that investment in the class. I, I do think that you will pass the exam and from what I'm reading, like you can make a, a, a pretty good amount of money being a real estate broker. I, I really don't have any plans to do it. I just wanted to see if I could. Um, but now that I have it right, like there's any real estate agencies out there that want to hire me in Chicago, I'm ready. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to, to ask in the comments and uh, I'll try to answer as many as I can. Thanks.